The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. Welcome again to Grace in Focus from the Grace Evangelical Society. Today, Catherine Wright and Ken Yates get back to their Romans series, which was started earlier this year. And they're in chapter 4 of Romans, where Paul is giving us a couple of illustrations of what it means to be declared righteous. One is from Abraham's life and one is from David's life. So stay with us for the next few minutes for this great discussion. Want to invite you to our website, faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. You will find there many resources, blogs, articles, videos, books, a way to receive our bi-monthly full-color magazine free of charge, And importantly, at the moment, still a way to get in on the Grace Evangelical Society's National Conference 2023, coming up May the 22nd through the 25th. And here is Ken Yates with a descriptive word about that conference. I've been going to the conferences since, I think, 1990. I've missed a few when I was in the military. I was overseas and wasn't able to come. But there's never been a time when I went to one of these conferences where I didn't learn something where I got insight to passages of scriptures that I didn't have before. It's just outstanding. You're not going to get any better teaching anywhere in the States. And I'm not saying that because I'm biased. Thank you, Ken. And friend, get registered at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. Find all the information you need there. And we'd love to see you at our national conference, May the 22nd through the 25th. That's faithalone.org. Now for today's discussion, here are Ken and Catherine. What leads us into chapter 4, if you heard our podcast on chapter 3, is that Paul has presented the problem for mankind, and then he has given us the solution. So, Catherine, why don't you tell us what the problem mankind faces? I thought you were going to ask me what the solution was. I was just going to say Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) The problem is that we're sinners, because of the sin problem that we have, we are under the wrath of God here and now, both believers and unbelievers. This is a statement about mankind that as we sin, that we will experience the consequences of those sins. And so we need to be delivered from that, from that present consequence in our lives as we are sinning. And certainly we can say from chapter 3, verses 9 through 20, that as Paul quotes a number of Old Testament passages, he says there are none righteous. Mm -hmm. No, not one. All like sheep have gone astray. So if none of us are righteous Mm -hmm. in our own power, Mm -hmm. then how do we become righteous before God? Well, in chapter 3, Paul gives us the solution. We are declared righteous by God when we believe in Jesus Christ for eternal life. He not only gives us eternal life, but he declares us righteous. So there's a solution. How can I be justified in God's eyes? And it's not exactly the same thing as being saved from hell. Being or saved receiving from, eternal life. It's right. a different benefit. Right. And so we are justified by faith in Jesus Christ. And that changes everything. It changes our relationship with God in the sense that now we can walk in righteousness. We can walk by the power of the Spirit because we have been declared righteous in His eyes. Before we were His enemies, now we're His children. And I think just to review what we talked about, again, Paul is writing to believers and he is writing to them about a deliverance, a salvation that they can experience as believers. So yes, they already have eternal life, but we also now have the spirit within us and we can walk by the spirit and be delivered from the consequences of sin as we walk righteously. And that all starts when God declares us righteous. That's exactly right. And so he's talking about Christian living. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting is towards the end of chapter three, Paul makes a statement. He says, this righteousness of God is apart from the law. In other words, we can't obtain it through the law. We can't obtain it by keeping the Ten Commandments. And he says it is witnessed by the law and the prophets. You can find it in the Old Testament. And that takes us to chapter 4, because what Paul does is he gives an example from the law and the prophets, which is the rest of the Old Testament. And in chapter 4, He says, I'm going to give you an example of someone in the law, and it's going to be Abraham, 
and someone from the prophets. And that's going to be David. And he's going to use these two men to explain what it means to be justified by faith. What do these two men teach us? He starts off chapter 4 by saying, What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? What does he do here with Abraham? What is his point here with Abraham? Now, he says about Abraham in verse 3, what do the scriptures say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So this fits very nicely with what Paul has been saying. He goes, we are made righteous by faith in Christ alone. Well, he says that's exactly how Abraham was declared righteous. Now, why does Paul use Abraham? Well, he uses him for a number of reasons, but one reason is because Abraham was considered a very, very godly man, a very, very righteous man. And if you were to look at Abraham, you would say, oh, well, maybe God accepted him because he lived righteously. But Paul says, no, everything I've said in chapters 1, 2, and 3, the Old Testament supports, and I'm going to pick the most righteous person you can think of. And what do we see about Abraham? He believed, and God declared him righteous. Mm -hmm. And this is in Genesis chapter 15. For you Bible students out there, you know that some people think, well, he was saved in Genesis 12. He was declared righteous in Genesis 12 when he left Ur of Chaldees. And that when he mentions this in Genesis 15, Moses is saying, now, Abraham was the one who was declared righteous, but it was all by faith. So whether you believe Abraham became a believer in Genesis 12 or whether he became a believer in Genesis 15, the point is still the same, that he didn't do it by good works. Mm -hmm. He did it by faith alone. His faith was in the coming Messiah. He believed in the coming Messiah. God told him that he would have a seed through whom the world would be blessed and Abraham believed it. And that's the way people in the Old Testament were declared righteous by God, by believing in the one who was to come. Abraham was declared righteous by faith. His faith was counted to him as righteousness. Mm -hmm. Zane Hodges talks about this in his commentary when he discusses Paul's point in Romans. It wasn't his works. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul goes on in chapter 4 to say, well, when was he declared righteous? Well, he was declared righteous before he was circumcised. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's an important part. So some righteous Jew might come along and say, well, it's because he did what God told him to do. He was circumcised. Paul says, no, it was before he was circumcised. And it was before the giving of the law. Therefore, the law had nothing to do with Abraham being declared righteous. He has nothing to boast about, right? He has nothing to boast about. Ephesians 2, right? It's not through our works that we have something to boast in, but it is by faith. And again, if there was anybody in the Old Testament who could claim his works, mm -hmm. it would be Abraham. But the example that Paul gives from the prophets, David, he's a little bit harder to figure out exactly what Paul is saying. When he talks about David in verses 5 through 8, starting in verse 6, just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. So that's kind of dovetailing on what he says about Abraham, that God imputed righteousness to David apart from works. Now, David, of course, is another hero in the Old Testament. He was the one who got the Davidic covenant that one of his descendants would sit upon the throne forever. He was a man after God's own heart. Yes, we know he was far from perfect. But what makes David different than Abraham here is what he says next. Mm -hmm. It's a quote. From Psalm 32. It's a very interesting quote. When you remember the context of Psalm 32. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He says, blessed are those who lawless deeds are forgiven and those whose sins are covered. 
Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Psalm 32 is the psalm that talks about what happened after David had murdered Uriah and committed adultery with Bathsheba and then repented and confessed his sins. Mm -hmm. So it's not like Abraham where Abraham came to faith and was saved. But here in David's life, we're talking about years after he was saved and now he's fallen into this sin and has repented. And he's speaking of the forgiveness that he's blessed in this forgiveness that he's experiencing. Yes, you notice that when Paul talks about Abraham, he doesn't talk about the forgiveness of sins. Right. He just says he was declared righteous. But with David, it's talking about a period in his life when he had failed miserably after being a believer for a long time. Mm -hmm. And he receives the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins is not the same thing as receiving eternal life. And David in Psalm 32 is talking about the forgiveness of sins. Right. So here's what we're going to throw out. What Paul is using David for is this. What he's saying is that the believer who has been justified by faith now has a relationship with God that even when he sins, he's still justified in God's eyes and he can come and find the forgiveness of sins even when he falls short. Yeah. Abraham is a picture of that justification that occurs at faith. David, as the second example, we see how that impacts the believer even decades after they've come to faith. Yes, that his, I don't want to say relationship, mm -hmm. but how he is seen in God's eyes has changed. Mm -hmm. That's what we're saying David is. Obviously, there's more work to be done on this. I hope it causes some of the listeners to think about it themselves. Mm -hmm. But whether we're talking about our initial justification by faith alone or what it means in our Christian life, remember, keep, keep grace, grace in focus. focus. The Zane Hodges Commentary on James, entitled The Epistle of James, Proven Character Through Testing, is available at discount to Grace in Focus listeners right now at faithalone.org. Get half price through April the 30th, 2023, when you use the discount code word JAMES. That's faithalone.org. Would you be interested in some free ebooks on topics you hear on this program? Well, if you are, you need to come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. On the site, we've got all kinds of free materials. But one of our popular options is our free ebooks on a range of subjects. They're designed to help you mature and grow in your understanding of the faith and scripture. So come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. We are so thankful for our financial partners who keep us on the air. Every gift is tax deductible and very much appreciated. If you'd like to find out how you can give, go to faithalone.org. Would you like to have a chat with Dr. Bob or one of the guests here on the program? Let me tell you how to reach out to the team. You can get us on our email address, which is radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. Come back and join us again next time when Ken and Catherine compare and contrast justification and sanctification in the book of Romans. This is the Grace Evangelical Society reminding you to always keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.